there are some problems that just cannot be solved without AI. Like the one that we are discussing in today's episode, call centers, monitoring and optimization. The problem is simple. One, how do you know if your customer assistance call center is solving the problems of your customers? And two, if it isn't, how do you know what to improve? Now, answering those simple questions in a traditional fashion would require some people from your organization listening to hundreds of thousands of hours of conversation. It's just crazy for anybody. But there is a better solution. Thanks to AI, of course. And today, together with Swati Sharma, lead data scientist at Trilio, we'll discuss how their AI solution named Call Center Actionable Insights solves this hard problem. We'll talk about many AI solutions and technologies like pitch to text, events modeling, root cause analysis, and more. But as usual, we will also go through some of the critical issues that need to be addressed for a successful deployment of an AI-enabled customer assistance solution. So listen to today's episode and find out how to make your customers more happy and your business more profitable, thanks to AI, of course. Enjoy! So welcome everyone to the AI and Digital Transformation podcast brought to you by GMSC Consulting. The main objective of this podcast is to talk with AI professionals and learn more about the use cases where AI is being applied in different scenarios. Today, our guest is Swati Sharma, and she's the head of data science for Brilio. Maybe perhaps you could talk more about uh, Brilio and also what you've done, I think, in the past, Swati, if possible. Yes, thank you so much for having me here. Um, so, so Brilio, um, so we basically believe in innovation across all domains, all verticals. Um, so we're trying to really create um, really advanced solutions for our clients. And uh, my, my domain is, is, is the you know, <clears throat> United States. So I work with a lot of clients here. Um, with that being said, we, we create a lot of really, really interesting solutions. Uh, of course, it depends on what the client has requested, what their pain points are. Um, but I can definitely say that we're working on some very, very unique and cutting edge um, solutions for our clients. So let, how do we begin this? Because I'd like to first, I think, learn more about Swati, because um, what we'll be talking about is something on AI. But uh, if uh, for sure, not many know, Swati also uh, has a lot of experience in data science. So I think along the way, I'll be asking, or maybe now, like, how easy was it for you to shift or to juggle between data science and um, a artificial intelligence, considering that you had a background with, on electrical, electronics, and communications engineering, engineering, which is not really straightforward as a career path. Yeah, a bit of a what's the story of Swati? <laughs> yeah, uh, so I've had a very interesting trajectory. Um, you know, in, in my past life, um, I did study electrical engineering. I have a PhD in electrical engineering. You know, really love studying quantum mechanics and the applications to, you know, nanotechnologies. Um, with that being said, I wouldn't say it's, it's that far removed, actually, believe it or not. Um, you know, that's where I really learned, loved and appreciated, you know, math. And I think I've always had this love from you know, the, the day I started undergrad. And I think that's the core basis for any good data science practice. Um, so I, I evolved from there. You know, I had um, various roles as an engineer, some startups, um, some, you know, regular companies uh, dabbled into quantitative finance. So it was kind of an organic move into quantitative finance. And, um, you know, one day somebody just mentioned to me, hey, data science is like, a, you know, a really cool area. And it's it's something that 
you might really enjoy. And at first I was like, um, no, I, I'm not too sure it's, it's for me. Um, you know, I, I like this really strong math world um, where I'm applying all my engineering uh, skills. Um, but I, I took a chance. Um, I, I enrolled in a program and became a budding data scientist. And from there, it's been no looking back. I have really, really enjoyed um, you know, solving really interesting problems. And I think the most fascinating part is working with data. It's like reading a great novel. You get to learn the human dynamics. And I find that so fascinating. I could spend forever just studying the data and pulling all these statistics out of it. And uh, I still remember my first role at and And I think my manager, he was just absolutely amazing. Um, he really believed in me and gave me a lot of confidence. And I was the only data scientist um, at the time in his group. So, you know, at the same time, I'm absolutely petrified of all the you know, the workings of the data science world because first time I'm actually applying what I've learned. But from there, you know, I just took, kept taking one step forward and just building my repertoire. And I feel that being stretched in multiple different directions with problems, with, uh, you know, internal, external clients, data, everything has built me to where I am now. And I think it's like a it's it's been a wonderful journey and I, I absolutely love it. I advocate machine learning, data science, AI to anyone and everyone. I teach it um, and mentor budding data scientists as well. I have you know, I do the same with, with those that report to me at Brilio as well. I really take them under my wing and um, you know, get them to build that passion for data and the analytics that, that comes with it. I like that um you mentioned how important was your um, science background, uh, how it enabled you to become the data scientist uh, that you are today. And um, on this matter, I I'm curious to hear your opinion about the recent trend in the AI world where there's this huge propaganda about AI being a plug and play uh, process uh, and the way I describe it, it's uh, um, that companies should not rely too much on this plug and play AI for the same reasons why you should not uh, self medicate after you have Googled your symptoms online. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I'm curious to hear your opinion because yeah. there's really a strong <laughs> campaign for this uh, pro. Uh, I have a lot plug and play to say AI. about it. Um, you know, partly it's because of my background and my experience and all the fundamentals. Um, like you said, you know, anybody can become, um, you know, Dr. Google um, just by sitting and surfing. Um, I feel that is not the best approach. Um, you, I see it over and over um, quite frequently where people just Google algorithms or, you know, Google things and, and just, you know, try to copy and paste or, you know, click and play or, or whatever it is, but just like instant gratification that they've gotten something to work or some results. Um, so if you want true power, you have to build on the fundamentals. You have to know how things work in order to really, really get the power of any sort of algorithm or any sort of tool or any sort of latest and greatest AI, it's, it's very dangerous to have limited knowledge with very powerful algorithms or tools. Um, it's like saying that you wouldn't want some surgeon to just Google how to do you know, certain surgery and just try it on you. you. You would want them to have that understanding, that appreciation of all the mundane little details that build up to it. And that's where you really get the most effective use of it. And you really understand how things work and what it can do and what the repercussions are. Until you, you get into the weeds of things, I don't think um, it's advisable to just you know click and play. Yeah. So I think it's kind of related to the use case we're going to talk about today because 
it's not an easy thing for plug and play concept. Yes, exactly. I totally agree with what you just said and um, Swati. And I think it's especially true for the use case that uh, you worked on, uh, which is cool. Call center actionable insights. And it is a very interesting uh, per se, but I think it it's even more interesting because it can translate to so many different contexts. And uh, it's a really useful uh, example of how AI can really uh, enable some kind of um, process that wouldn't, wouldn't be just possible without it, because it would be not really feasible, not you, you ma humanely feasible. So, but let's not uh, wait anymore and uh, we'll let you describe uh, your own solution, like who better than you? Right. So please, uh, Swati. Yes. Um, so, you, so you're referring to what we call a CCAI call center actionable insights. And, uh, you know, it's funny, we were just talking about click and play, but it's, it's one thing to be the user, the consumer of it. And it's another thing to be the one who creates the implementation the application. So there's, there's two different things. And, you know, we are on the creator side where we have to fully understand um, everything about this tool or the solution that we've created in order to create a user experience that is very simple and friendly and you understand what the results are. It's not like it's going to give you some completely bizarre, unexpected thing, unless that's what's in your data. So call center analytics um, it's a very exciting piece of work. So as you all know, call centers are, are, you know, everywhere. Almost every single business has a call center and it's their way of engaging with consumers. Um, it can be a source of marketing where they can, um, you know, perhaps, um, you know, encourage consumers to use other solutions that they offer, or it can be a way for them to also increase their consumer base. Uh, so it's a very valuable uh, component. So uh, businesses want that their call centers run effectively and efficiently. And that can only be done if you monitor and are completely aware of what is going on in the call center. Up today, um, everything has been kind of done in a, in a more manual and simplistic way where the CSR agent will complete a call, they'll have a pull down menu, and, um, you know, populate certain things, um, explain the nature of the call, perhaps give like a one or two line summary. And, you know, at, after X number of days or after X number of calls, whatever it is, um, you know, the, the operations manager will go in and try to make sense of all this data he has, he has accrued. Um, it's on a call by call basis. So it's very overwhelming and very challenging to really make some men's in the call center. So what call center um, uh, AI does is that it really gets the data and it understands what is being said. So we take transcribed calls and we have this very complex AI pipeline that we built and it digests this data you know, these calls, these transcribed calls, um, and extract latent insights. Sorry, Swati, may, may, maybe before delving a bit deeper into the uh, structure of the solution, I think it's good if we take just one step back to clarify exactly what the use case is about from a, sure. the perspective of someone who never dealt with this before. Like, I think the problem here is that... Um, uh, you have a call center that is usually outsourced. So usually it's not the company itself. So they delegate the management of their customers to a third party call center. They have to somehow provide some training to this call center. But the problem is that uh, they it's very hard to evaluate the performance of the call center um, because it's just because of the scale of the number of calls. So it cannot be a single manager that sits down and reviews every call one by one because it's not feasible. And so what was done before 
uh, um, CCAI, your solution, was that was asked to the a bit of the from the customer side and also from the side of the call center operator to just uh, fill some kind of very simplified form that would allow for some kind of statistics. But this approach uh, is very s simplistic and not powerful, but it was uh, the only alternative to no insights at all before CCI. Whereas with your uh, solution, you can analyze this huge amount of uh, calls recording like in a way that it's much more similar to what the manager would do just reading the transcript one by one. Is this a good synthesis? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a way to understand and digest huge volumes of calls at once, uh, to classify them, to get really valuable insights that are below the surface. So, you know, typically, traditionally, everything was surface level, like very, very basic statistics. And it wasn't really uh, enabling these call centers to really maximize their impact with the consumer. Um, like, how do they know what their pain points are at the call center? What are the weak spots? So it's very challenging to understand and discern that if you're doing it on a call by call basis, even if you're doing it like, you know, a small aggregate level, it's still very, very challenging if you're taking just the surface level uh, metrics. Yeah. So it's like saying without AI, uh, your the process that it would take to analyze this data won't be that efficient. Like even the analysis won't be that efficient because, it, as you said, it's just skimming the surface. Uh, I would right? say I would say it would be impossible because of the sheer amount of data. data. And one thing that is also very interesting is that this solution is specific of call centers, but if you just remove the first layer, which is the speech to text, it can be applied to any uh, customer uh, serve customer assistance service, like it could be applied to a thread of emails, for example. I think uh, the uh, remainder part of the pipeline would work uh, as well. Absolutely. Emails, chatbot conversations, we're, we're working on that as well. Any sort of text, large or small, you know, of course, there'd be adjustments, but it, it makes the whole process of understanding and extracting value from this information in a very simple automated way um, where otherwise you would need like you know a whole team of folks and some of these calls to be honest are like half an hour we've had calls that went on you know for very very long periods um, it's it's very hard to go in and manually and that too subjectively um, extract all these informations in a in a very uniform way. So that's where AI, um, you know, we really capitalize on AI and the whole, you know, the set of algorithms to really automate this process in a very user friendly way. Hmm. Just a question, like, um, because um, I try to understand the use case a bit. And I was wondering, like, do you record all the calls before letting the AI do everything? Or does it go like, how do I call it? Like, on the spot, like analysis on the well, spot. The question, I think it's, uh, is an offline or an online analysis? Yes. So call centers are not, um, you know, they're not an entity that is very fast paced. Although we could do it where it's it's live data that you're feeding in, that is an option. It just you know depends on how you build the pipeline. But as of now, the solution is more for bulk calls that you feed into the algorithm, and they are digested. So we've taken um, you know we we often recommend like three months worth of calls or you know x number of calls, but after that you can feed in like smaller quantities of calls to get a faster um, review. But but being said, you know, unless your business is very seasonal, um, it, it really wouldn't make an impact to have live feed going into it. Mm. 
Yeah, because we were thinking and discussing together with Angelique uh, before the call, and um, if this solution were, uh, and I think as you said, it's probably very possible, made um, online, it could be used to assist the operator during the call itself. And uh, that could be an interesting development. But um, for the sake of uh, letting our uh, listeners understand better, um, as you said, uh, um, the UI, the user interface is very user friendly. It's very easy to understand uh, because its uh, goal is to make the insights very clear to the decision makers that uh, uh, review it. But um, how much uh, work is needed to uh, apply uh, this solution to a new use case, to a new domain? Like uh, how much uh, effort do you need, does your data science team need to put in, in order to adapt this pipeline to a completely different uh, uh, context? Because uh, I imagine that uh, it's not plug and play. It's plug and play once it's uh, adapted, let's say, and it's probably very easy to use, but I think there's a bit of, uh, uh, how to say, startup phase. If I may add, is um, how do I call it? Who are the people that have to be involved aside from your data science team? Because I'm assuming there will be the managers and the other people. Yeah, during the startup phase, too. Yeah. So, like, how's the startup phase? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So there's there's many variables that go into really giving a definitive answer to this. Um, one, of course, is the domain. There's a little bit of um, understanding that we as a data science team have to uh, to deal with, where we sit with uh, you know domain experts, perhaps CSR agents themselves, and try to understand the nature of the calls and um, you know the the verbiage that they use and make sure that our model understands that. Secondly, this entire uh, pipeline CCAI is is very customizable. So we you know we we offer some default um, insights, but it all varies on what the customer is interested in, <clears throat> what their what if they already have an understanding of what their pain points are. We can always look for what they are asking for specifically. Like for example, if they're not interested in metric A um, and they want something a little different or maybe something more in depth, we can definitely customize um, you know, our breadth and depth of these insights into the data. Could you give us a, a simple example of some insights that are usually uh, re relevant for um, the users of CCI? Yeah, um, you know, first and foremost, you want to know if the call has been resolved. And I know, you know, when agents go in, they, they may have a, a, a means to do that. But like I said, it's on a call by call basis. So what we want to know is if, let's say it's, a, you know, a, a, a furniture company and they sell beds, they sell sofas, they sell tables. But you want to know how many calls regarding tables have been resolved, how many calls have been escalated. So escalation in this whole call center world is like the most serious um, incident because it's, you know, every call that is made to a business, it, it, it is a cost, um, a monetary cost. So when a call is escalated or it has all these red flags, which we extract, um, it means typically that the call A was a lengthy call and B, your agents are not well equipped, not trained. So it really highlights a lot of issues. So you can really do, you know, your root cause analysis, but, you know, escalation, resolution, um, you know, if if the caller felt comfortable on the call, if, um, you know, if the if all of the details were answered in a timely way, um, is he a repeat caller? Is he happy on the call? Um, you know, or does his mood fluctuate? Is it because it was not resolved? So we, we get a you know, a very multidimensional view of this call. And it's something that has not been seen before. And we can really, you know, differentiate 
um, by categories. Um, so calls regarding tables tend to be uh, a weak spot. So, you know, we need to go in and, and fix these issues. Um, so there's a lot of metrics um, you know, our favorites one, our favorite ones are definitely escalation, resolution, um, you know, tone of the, the customer, tone of the agent, overall happiness of the customer, um, you know, all sorts of things we can layer upon these metrics and extract. Um, so like I said, we can definitely customize what somebody is looking for in the data, but these are some that we definitely recommend to our customers. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And well, once that uh, once you have all this data, who is actually in charge of like resolving them? Like uh, training? Do they? Uh, who is the one that has to train these people in the call centers to do better next time? Like who is or uh, what do they actually do with that? I think who what because those, it's uh, kind insights? of obvious it will be a who. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the more general question is like, what happens after the insights usually? Yeah, so so multiple things. One, whoever is is the manager of that call center, they know that um, you know we need to train better on um, understanding everything about tables and sofas or whatever that that um, entity is, and equip our agents in a better way. Um, you know, training in how to conduct calls, how to, um, you know, converse with these callers, how to understand their issues, how to ask the right questions. So they can pinpoint exactly, um, you know, what needs to be done to immediately improve, um, you know, the nature of these calls. However, you can't take it a step forward. So CCAI is an enabler. Um, you know, I call it an enabler for for multiple applications. So one is definitely RCA, root cause analysis. Secondly, it's an amazing, um, you know, source for, you know, for example, if you want to further automate the call center, you can use it as a, as a base for conversational AI and build chatbots on top of, you know, actual callers. Maybe they, they, they handle certain types of calls. So you can route certain types of calls. Um, you know, all sorts of things. It can definitely be, you know, a very cost effective solution for the business to layer on conversational AI. And it's, it's a very exciting um, field that we're getting more and more into. I mean, we have some clients of ours where we're actually building conversational AI. And, you know, this sort of understanding of the calls, the nature of the calls, is a landmine of information for creating the basis of any sort of chatbot. Hmm. Which brings me, to, I think, to my next question, because it's something uh, many are concerned about, uh, concerned about lately, like the privacy. And um, based on all these recorded calls, do you actually have a program which already censors sensitive data, for example? Yes. So what that's the part of data understanding where we sit down with whoever the client is and we need to understand the verbiage, um, you know, what is sensitive data, what is not. So, so that is a critical part of the data understanding that we need to sit down with. Do you have a follow up? Well, yes. I mean, um, this, this question relates to... Uh, a bigger, I think, more general question, which is like, uh, uh, what kind of data uh, do you need and what are the major data-related challenges that uh, you have when building uh, and customizing one of these uh, uh, systems? Yes. Um, so for this specific application uh, for CCEI, uh, we consume calls, so customer calls, uh, CSR calls, which have been transcribed, and the whole transcription process is a is a you know another story of its own. You need to use a quality um, you know STT process, and you know for our purposes as a demo, we built it all on AWS. So they offer you know AWS transcribe and all that, but it's all you know very flexible depending on what the client's needs are or what their resources are um so that is that is what is consumed into ccai 
and we need a large volume of calls um you know very large maybe you know 200,000 depends on the length of calls also but you know typically it's about 3 months worth of calls the more calls um of course the better the results will be um so we need to build that baseline with a large volume of calls um with that being said we've had a lot of issues with understanding the data so the data is 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 very messy um you know if you were to look at the data and um read each call you would probably get lost because um you know interestingly we don't even differentiate um between caller and csr agent we're able to pick that up with our um with our ai pipeline um but if it is uh, you know differentiated it's still you know we will still see a lot of anomalies um i wouldn't even call them anomalies you know a good good chunk of the data usually doesn't um behave in the typical expected way so we need to really take that that honest time to understand the data and i would say the pre processing stage is probably the most critical because you know the saying garbage in garbage out so you really need to understand the data and maintain the sanctity of the data so you have to do a very very thorough analysis and understand how to you know translate this data into you know of course all this ai pipeline is is built on numbers not on actual words so we need to understand how to translate it and how to manipulate it properly so we maintain you know the nature of these calls and i think that has been the biggest challenge um for for building the whole ccai mm well let's think about another scenario for example like people who call 911 or emergency calls do you think for example uh you could filter out some noises that could be to, that could be hints for like some emergency for example during the call or if there are like recurring calls for let's say domestic abuse do you think in the long run some the, the program will also be able to accumulate and record like this specific thing in this area has been happening over and over again and so there is a red flag or something like that good question um you know to be honest ccai is built more for the commercial business and not so much for 911 um in order to build it out for you know an emergency um hotline like 911 um i think what would have to be done would would be to really um dissect and build our own stt process speech to text process where it just doesn't um you know pick up words uh, but it also picks up background sounds and like you said those sounds can be um a clue and really you know direct what needs to be done um so i think that is the biggest piece lacking um is this stt uh, process and i think for that it would also require a lot more data to really understand um the nature of these background sounds um you know in a in a meaningful manner so that part would definitely have to be um you know tweet yeah that's all very interesting so many potential applications for this kind of systems yeah so really useful and um so as we said uh, like adapting this kind of system can be fast but not easy so it needs like skilled uh, data scientists behind it but usually there are always some kind of issues uh, with the customer so uh, what are the common issues that uh, communication issues for example that uh, happen with a customer something that uh, maybe they expect uh, in a different way that how it actually is like uh, like misconceptions you yeah mean? misconception what would be the major disclaimers that uh, you would uh, tell to whoever uh is interested in this kind of uh, solutions like what do you need do they need to expect uh how do they need to be prepared to get the most out of this system yes um i think you know we we gen we generally avoid 
all sort of misconceptions. Either way, we are very sensitive to, um, you know, how to explain the whole process. We generally, um, you know, we, we provide information as to how the pipeline works. We built in all of the things that they would possibly be interested in. That comes in the discovery phase where we sit down and we ask them, you know, what are your needs? What are you looking for? Um, and we we spend time in building out the metrics that would be best suited to them. And, you know, the output, the, the user interface, we, we generally recommend a dashboard. So we build it such that it's the most used usable for them. So it's, everything is a very tailor-made process for them. And then when we also leave, um, you know, the, the client is fully um, educated on how to use uh, CCEI, how to maintain it, how to address if certain flags come. So we, we have a very thorough KT process at the end of building our solution. Um, where we sit down and address all the possibilities. And of course, there's the whole ML ops, which we build into this and kind of keeps it a self-contained system. So it's very hard to break it. Um, it's, it's all contained. And it's just about the user or the client knowing what they want. It could be, you know, six months later, you know, they're like, hey, you know, we want to add this in. Um, but I wouldn't say it's really a misconception. It's just like, they love the you know the the insights that they're getting and it's very valuable and they can build on it so i i don't think we've had really the misconceptions have you ever experienced like there some pushback for example i've been reading lately that there are some people who don't think ai is being applied to their life right now but for example this call center agents uh do you think that they realize like how helpful ai is or they think that it would make them lose their jobs or something like that? Uh, yes. So, you know, I have, I have, you know, seen it um, with some of our clients, maybe not with CCAI, where, um, you know, they have some big understanding and AI is very sci-fi to them and, you know, all that. And they feel that they're going to be replaced. Um, you know, we don't really want to replace anyone. We want to, facilitate whatever they're doing and make their work experience, their work output much more enhanced and powerful. Um, so we really go in and we're very clear about that. Um, you know, rest is on the client, how they want to, you know, absorb it into their whole business. Um, but we don't go with that intention of, of replacing anyone. I don't think people are directly replaceable where, you know, you, you truly have the full functioning of a human mind as of yet. I don't know, maybe it may be possible, um, but but it's it's meant to enhance. And I think we see AI all over the place and it's, it's definitely enhancing our lives. Well, uh, I agree with you. Um, and yet many employees, they perceive uh, this system as a threat rather than a, uh, a tool to uh, increase the quality of their work. Um, and to be honest, uh, I think there is a bit of truth behind it because as you said, it's up to the client to in the end to say, okay, with the same investments, I get a better output or, well, I want the same quality, but I want to reduce the investment. So it's like, it, it is actually up to the, the final client uh, and this just confirms that AI is just a tool. So it's not bad or good. It depends how you use it in the end. Yes. That, so so any tool in the wrong hands can can cause harm. Uh, you know, we have to be honest about it. And AI is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So like I said at the beginning, it's very important for people to understand the foundation, the fundamentals, to really use it and implement it in an ethical, proper way. There are, unfortunately, in the world we live in, people who are going to abuse it. So we really need to, you know, educate uh, people in a much more meaningful way, whether it's in schools. I know children in schools are already learning about AI, which is pretty cool. But I think even the grown-ups, employees, 
um, they need to have that understanding, that education. And when you equip anybody with knowledge, it really quiets down the fear. So I think that's key. Hmm. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. Well, so I think uh, we discussed uh, um, this, the ins and the outs of this solution. Maybe not the technical details, but um, I think uh, we can add some uh, reference to a more technical uh, video that uh, you already yeah. uh, recorded, Swati, for uh, the listeners who are more interested into the nitty gritty of the AI solution. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I think this is a, a good uh, example of it. And I liked how you um, put the stress on how paramount communication is for the success of uh, this kind of project. So this is also a very uh, important takeaway from um, this uh, use case. So do you have any other question, Angelique? Yeah. So before we wrap it up, I would just like to ask Swati if she has a recommended book for our dear listeners. It doesn't have to be technical. <laughs> oh, this is a fun question. <laughs> um, I, I have lots of books. Um, I mean, if we're talking about data science and AI, I would say even AI, like if you want to understand and appreciate and you want to be, you know, a practitioner in this field and a creator, um, it's, it's very important to understand the basics. So I would say, you know, pick up any amazing stats book. I have a whole library full of them. But I would say um, one book that I, I still refer to today, even though it's been many, many years, um, is, is a machine learning book by Schwartz and Ben David. And um, I have that book even on my phone. So, <laughs> you know, if I'm in a meeting or something and I need a quick um, idea or something, I think, you know, classics like these um, are just critical. Like like I said, there's, there's no end to innovation, but you need to, to be equipped with the basics and appreciate that and, yeah. and work your so way because- up. I think sometimes we use the word AI because it sounds so good from a marketing point of view, but what we're really doing is machine learning and pattern recognition. And that's, uh, that's statistics and math and likelihoods and the correlations. And it's, uh, that so made it sound less interesting. It, yeah. <laughs> it sounds less interesting, but that's what it is. So, uh, it just comes obvious and natural that if you want to do it well, you need uh, to have that knowledge and uh, why not yeah. keep it uh, with you all the time, even on your phone, like Swati. So <laughs> 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 I like that. I, I might think about that as well. My Putting favorite book. Phone. Yeah. My favorite book is like uh, machine learning and pattern recognition from Bishop. So it's like, uh, it's definitely big to carry around. I don't know. I will look for the ebook now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There are ebooks for all the books. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if um, any if any of our listeners are interested to learn more about this use case, we will be putting up Swati's uh, details in the show notes and as well a link to the video where she talks more about the details of the use case. More than the details, the, the technicalities, the technicalities of the yes. uh, of the machine learning pipeline, which uh, are very interesting for whoever has a more technical background. Yeah. So. Uh, to whoever is an entrepreneur and uh, is fascinated by this uh, solution, I would recommend uh, him or her to refer that video to one of their engineers so they can have a better idea of how it's built. Yeah. And uh, so with this, uh, I would like to thank you again, Swati. This has been a really interesting and uh, useful uh, um, episode. And um, Angelique. I think we're done. Yeah. So thank you again, dear listeners. If you like this episode, please share it with your friends or your colleagues and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for being with us. Bye. Bye, Thank you. Bye.